Let's take a look at problem number 17 from the TEA practice test for computer science certification. It says we're going to consider the following pseudocode procedure calc, where the first and second parameters are passed by value, and the third and fourth parameters are passed by reference. That is, actual parameters passed to formal parameters w and x are passed by value, while those passed to formal parameters y and z are passed by reference. When calc does its thing, w becomes w plus 1, x becomes x times 2, y becomes y plus 3, and z becomes z times 4. When we go down to here, we want to know what are the values of a and b after this code segment. a starts out as 5, b starts out as 6. And we can see that a is sending its value 5 twice once to w and once to x. And b is sending its value 6 also twice, once to y and once to z. It's helpful if you just draw out a little chart or boxes or something to help you keep track of what the values are. So if we send the value of a, which is 5, to w when we call it, that means w gets a 5. x also gets a 5. Y doesn't get the 6, it gets where the 6 is located. So it points to where B is pointing to. Same thing with Z. And the reason we don't write the 6 here and here is because these are passed by reference. And if you remember in passing by reference, it's not the value that it's passed, it's the reference to the value, the memory location. So now, 6 is being referenced by three different things, B, and y, and z. w adds 1 to itself. That means the 5 becomes a 6. x doubles itself. That means the x becomes 10. y increases by 3. That means that this 6 becomes 9. Now, when it's z's turn to do, the value it's pointing to is no longer 6. It is 9. Therefore, when z multiplies by 4, 9 times 4 is 36. So when we finish the execution of this method calc, the final values are 5 and 36, which is choice B. Now, the common mistake here is to forget that z is pointing to this value. And so some will think that that's still a 6, and multiply the 6 times the 4 to get 24, which would be A. And quite often in many multiple choice tests, A is the best wrong answer, the best distractor. So it's helpful, again, as you're working through this type of problem, to draw out some sort of a chart to keep track of the values. That way you're not having to keep everything in your head.